has been right on for the last several years, and not much of it was very exciting if you're not walking right with God. The Spirit of God fell on me a while back, and remember, the Spirit of the Lord prophetically spoke through me about 2021. <laughs> I said 2021 would be like 2020 on steroids. God said that. And he said it will get even worse for those people that are not walking with God. I don't think you have to be very discerning to tell that this year is even worse than last year. Now there would be people that said you didn't hear God and you're judgmental. You can say what God says about judgment without being judgmental. And the reason I had Pastor Allen play that song for us before this message is so that you know that I know that I stand up here Sunday after Sunday just because I may be bolder than the average Christian or the average pastor and say things that many won't that's not in my heart. I'm not judgmental. That's what I remind myself of every day. That if it wasn't for the grace of God, I would still be flat on my back and hopeless and helpless. I know what it's like to fill God. I know what it's like to be on the wrong side of God. I know what it's like to know where not to turn have no idea what to do. And all you see for your future is depression and emptiness. So when God speaks to me, I usually spend time in my office. <coughs> and a lot of tears before I ever stand out here. Because I know that those people are exactly like I was except for the grace of God. And I remember the phrase all the time that except for the grace of God there go I I detest sin and I detest people that thumb their nose at God but I was exactly like that and it's because of God picking me up and dusting me off that I live to reach people's lives not because I'm judgmental but I hope that they escape that judgment it is surely coming and it will surely happen. Yeah. But because I do know what it's like to be on that side, I live to touch them and reach them before the judgment they deserve comes upon them. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? So I never prophesy anything with glee or with there you go, I told you so, or there you deserve it. That's not the love of God. I prophesy, they, they say, thus saith the Lord, many times after hours of tears that you'll never witness, and that you never see. But when I stand up here, I'm ready to say, thus saith the Lord, and say it with boldness, because I know that if I don't, that one person might not be reached. That one person may not be heard. Some you say with love and some you absolutely say by fear. God spoke against prophets and said everything's going to be great. But God said, what are you talking about? It's not going to be great. I'm judging you. And even though judgment was coming, the prophets were telling her things were going on. We better be careful. We better be very careful what we say to people, what season we live in. How we handle people. Because judgment's at the door for the ungodly. Judgment's at the door for the child of God that lives like the ungodly. Yeah. Remember I said it will be great for those that are sold out to God. It will be bad for the ones that are without God and the ones that are living like they're without God. It's going to be terrible and it's going to get worse. I said if you want to live like the heathen and you're saved, you're going to shake and fall like the heathen. If you want to 
you'll live in a world you don't trouble what the world will do. But if you sell out to God and get closer to God, everything's going to be fine with you. Do you remember those words? A few things started happening a couple of weeks ago, and I don't think most people really realize the prophetic impact of what took place. I immediately recognized it, just like now, now they're re... Somebody get a bottle of water, Sister Peggy, please. That one's not open. Now they're re-showing the video. Some prophets are actually re-showing the video, but nobody said it except me. I, I showed it to our church. The day the Pope came out on the balcony and released the two peace doves, and all of a sudden, right in front of national TV, a crow and a seagull came down and grabbed each one of them and killed them right there on camera. Mm -hmm. And God immediately revealed to me that that was the judgment of God because this man's peace was a false peace. That he was a liar. He was a false pope. And God says, judgment's coming from the sea and judgment's coming from the earth. Do you remember me saying that? Amen. Nobody else said it. But it's happened exactly like that. And the man ended up being exactly what God revealed to be instantaneously a false prophet and an antichrist. And his peace is a false peace. It's a lie against God's heart. Amen. So I know what I hear God. And I know that I know that I know I've heard God in this message. And it's been confirmed. So he also said this. He said, when you, when you go before the people, let my word do the, do the teaching. So I'm just mostly just going to read out the word and God's going to say his message. But before that, I want, I want to slowly go down the list here of some things happening right now that you may not be aware of that are absolutely supernaturally prophetic. <clears throat> are you ready? Yes, Number one, and also the time the timeline is very, very important that you get this. On August 15th, the Washington Monument was struck with lightning. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but the, the evening that the Pope was voted into his position, the Vatican was struck with lightning twice. And he ended up being an abomination. I don't care how dense you are, I knew immediately that was the judgment finger of God denouncing the action of putting him in. But very few people recognized it. It was God signaling, this is not of me. And boy, has it been evidence ever since then that this man is an antichrist spirit. Hello. So on August 15th, lightning struck the Washington Monument. Why the Washington Monument? What goes on in Washington? It's the seat of governing. It's where the nation is governed. Why would God strike Washington Monument, Washington, with lightning? How about this? Are you ready? Since that poll, since that day, since 9-11, America's gotten worse. Since 9-11, We have legalized the lifestyle of the abominable. There's been more abortions than ever. We've become more reprobate, more godless. In every way and in every manner, we have increased our sin, legalized our sin, and legally passed laws to protect our sin. That's why God was trying to as a symbol that we're in trouble. Well, it's always been hit by lightning. Okay, fine. But this time it damaged it. And they're going to have to try to repair it. Listen to me as a man of God. There'll be no repair for horses. That's right. We have yet to repent of our sins. America is still, at least the, 
the so-called Christian class and conservative class of America has not read the signs of the times right. They're still looking to Donald Trump as the savior. They're still wanting a man, listen, a man to bring America back to normal so that we can just live our sinful lifestyles the way we used to in moderate Christianity. Well, God would not allow him to come back. Now we're still believing God for a miracle that he'll come back and save America. God striking Washington Monument so for us to repent of our idolatry. Donald Trump is not America's salvation. Jesus Christ is America's salvation. Amen. And until we repent, there will be no remedy for this nation. August 22nd, make a note, exactly seven days later. Anybody know that there's significance in numbers with God? Amen. From August 15th to August 22nd, exactly seven days. <coughs> what is seven? That's God's number. God's moving again. August 22nd, the World Trade Center struck by lightning. Exactly seven days after the worship in life. What's in New York? What's at the World Trade Center? All the corruption of culture, fashion, trade, money, and the United Nations. The greatest abomination in the world. Exactly seven days later, struck by lightning. August 22nd, within the same 24 hour period, Hurricane Henry hits New York after the Trade Center has been struck by lightning. Now, do you think that those people in the state of New York, do you think 2021 is better than 2020? Not only are they dealing with COVID, now they're dealing with their entire lives being wiped out by, nat by natural disaster. It didn't get better for them, did it? Didn't the Lord warn that? It'll be 2020 on steroids. I, I'm telling you right now for the entire state of New York, particularly the eastern seaboard, their lives were completely turned upside down on top of COVID. The love of money. Wall Street. Babylon. United Nations. Commerce, compromise, and culture. Fashion. All comes out of New York. Everything that shapes your lifestyles and your culture comes out of New York and comes out of Washington. Same 24 hour period is struck with a historic, amazing, isn't it? A never before seen hurricane. And yet nobody's talking about it because nobody can recognize that something's happening prophetically right in front of their eyes. Still looking for Donald Trump. Isn't it interesting where Donald Trump used to live in New York, where he was raised in New York, where all of his businesses are at in New York, where his headquarters is at in New York. Yes, he lives in Florida now, but until he got forced out of New York by the governor being harassed by him, he lived in New York. Your salvation is not coming from New York. Your salvation is not coming from Wall Street. Your joy is not coming from the latest fashions of New York. Your safety is not coming from Washington. America is not going to be restored to greatness by Washington. Morality is not coming out of Washington. Listen to me, body of Christ. Shake yourselves out of delusion and stop looking where there is no salvation and come back to God, come back to Jesus, come back to the cross and repent. 
August 29th. Again, exactly seven days. Now, folks, you can't, you can't plan this. This is ordained of God. It's exactly seven days from getting the Washington Monument struck to the World Trade Center struck. Exactly seven days from Hurricane Henry to August 29th, Hurricane Ida. Exactly seven days. Then Hurricane Ida hits. Now listen, Louisiana. Exactly on the exact same days, 16 years later from Hurricane Katrina. On the exact same day. And yet you don't recognize God's hand in this. Do you understand that when Katrina hit Louisiana, they were holding, they were planning that week to hold the International Homosexual Convention? Yes, that's a, that's a fact. Now we repented of many of that. No, it's not wars. We've legalized it. Yeah. We've honored it. We've protected it. What, what, what's in New Orleans? The highest population of national voodoo worshipers and evil, adulterous, Babylonian religions in New Orleans. They make the major amount of their money from tourists and voodoo and witchcraft and soothsaying and fortune tellers and all manner of evil protected and blessed with commerce. Unrepentant and completely indifferent to God's laws. Come on, brother. Exactly seven days later, exactly on the exact day, 16 years later, the hurricane, I mean, on the same day, Another, do you think their lives are turned upside down? No. Do you think do you think it's better for them since 2020? Not only COVID, another history-making hurricane has wiped out half that area again. Again. But God couldn't be in that, could he? No, there's people down there in churches binding the devil for, for that because they cannot recognize that God still judges sin. Even under grace. Well, well, the righteous are protected. The righteous are protected. There is no totally righteous government or country in the world. Just because it says the United States doesn't mean it's not Egypt, folks. We live in Egypt. We live in Babylon the Great. We live in the nation that's whoring after other gods and other means for the safety, security, and blessing. And don't think God honors that just because somebody that knows Jesus lives there. Come on, well, what about Abraham? What about Abraham? That was Abraham in Abraham's time. That does not apply now. Amen. If you think so, then why were you think there's no Christians in Louisiana? How many churches got wiped out in New Orleans? Don't tell me that it's not going to happen because the righteous live there. There's Christians died in that mess. Well, how can that happen? How come, how come you like you're happy to live there? I wouldn't, I wouldn't live in a town completely given over to voodoo, prostitution, drugs, alcohol, and 24-hour partying. I wouldn't even live there. I will never live in Las Vegas. Why? It's dedicated to sin and corruption. Amen. So you want to live there, you'll shake and judge with them. Amen. Particularly if you enjoy it. Seven days. Seven days. Sixteen days. I thought, that, God, you're trying to say something to the people that have blinded themselves in an out of balance doctrine and Loving the world. So I looked it up. I'm going to have to take my time and slowly read this. You ready? Amen. 16 years to the day Katrina hit. The domestic capital of voodoo and false religions. And that's the major part of their money. 
Is that alcohol and prostitution? I looked up, there's got to be something to the number 16. The number 16 biblically stands for the love of God. Isn't that amazing? But then it goes on to say this, that implying toward the Christians is talking about not just loving God for God being good and, and loving God enough to keep his commandments, but loving God in his ways and his judgments. In other words, really being in step with his heart, not just making sure you don't sin. That's what the number 16 means. Are you ready? Not just keeping his commandments, but with the full intentions of loving and obeying the laws and judgments of God. That's what the number 16 means. I submit to you, God's trying to tell us something. We haven't repented since critique, Katrina. We haven't gotten more godly. We haven't had our hearts given over to his, to his commandments and his judgments. Some of us are trying not to sin, but our heart's not given over to it. Because we're still looking for Donald Trump and the government to save us. That's not fully given over to God. I don't care what you say. Yes, you may be saved, but that kind of that kind of heart, thank you for saving me, but make sure you put Donald Trump in so he can save America. You, have a, you don't realize how far you've lost your dependency on God as being your source. Yes, Did you know the longest words in the New Testament are 16, 16 letter words? The first they listed was this. It's amazing. Tell me this isn't a, a, a divine coincidence. Covenant breakers. 16 letter words. Well, why would this all be coming now? Haven't you noticed that we've betrayed Israel? Yeah. Yeah. Are you deaf, dumb, and blind and realize that you can, whatsoever you do to Israel, God will do to you? That is an eternal, everlasting covenant. I will bless those that bless Israel. I will curse those. And it doesn't say a P.S. except for America. Yeah. We have betrayed Israel, and judgment's already started for it. And that's in the number 16. The eternal love of God for his people Israel. Don't you tell me this isn't all tied together. Don't you tell me God's not supernaturally trying to tell America, you better repent or worse is coming for the turning your back on Israel. Amen. <clears throat> the Hebrew word for 16 is Shisha Asar. Means, listen, number 16, now this is going to apply to the rest of it profoundly. That word 16, shisha, ashar, new beginnings. Do you think they haven't started all over in Louisiana? Think they haven't started all over in New York on top of COVID? 2021 is going to be 2020 on steroids. Didn't God tell us that? Nobody wanted to hear this, this doom and gloom preacher, did they? I'm telling you right now, it's still in gloom for them right now. Why? Because there's been no repentance. 16. New beginnings, New Orleans. New beginnings, New York. New beginnings, America. Better start over. It also means this. Are you listening? Now listen, listen to this post because I'm going to... Go back to this other part and read what else is going on right now. It's going to absolutely confound you. Are you ready? The number 16. 16 day, years to the day. New beginning. Lingering time in the presence of the Father. 16. You better get in the presence of God. You better repent. You better spend time with God. Come back to God. That's what it means. You better stop playing in the world. Come back to God. Linger in His presence. That's what 16 means. Why would he do it exactly 16 years? To the day! You better come back to me. You better linger in my presence. He's trying to tell us something. If you don't think so, listen to this next part when I turn the page. Lingering with the Father. The 
numeric value of the letters. That's all critical in the Hebrew calendar and, and Hebrew alphabet. Totals up to 16, to, uh, that word totals up to 70. 70, listen, is the number for nations. God's trying to tell you, I'm getting ready to move. Every nation's in trouble. The number of nations. It's the number for the seven spirits of God. Comma, that their eyes are looking to and fro all over the earth. God's watching. God's looking. God's weighing and measuring. You better get yourself in his presence. I can't. I, I wish I could shout that from a book. Now, what else is going on right now? Are you ready? This is going to blow you away. Ida, it happened in August 29th. September 6th to September 9th begins Rosh Hashanah, the Hebrew New Year. 16 new beginnings. At the same time, Rosh Hashanah. Starting over, starting over. Saying it in the natural, saying it with judgment, and saying it in this calendar. What do you think God's trying to say? You better start over. You better come back to me and spend time with me. Between Rosh Hashanah, September 15th to September 16th is Yom Kippur. Between Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah is the 10 days of awe. Start a new beginning with God. You have 10 days of awe. And what are you commanded to do? Do nothing except sit in evaluation and repentance Amen. before God in your life. Yes. In other words, the Hebrews taught this, that in the, in the, in the days of awe, you came before God and you listened to your own heart and said, Father, I'm sorry, I repented. For, I repent for this. I'm guilty for that. I failed you in this. Forgive me of that. Cleanse me of this. And you, you get yourself right. You go to anybody that you sin and transgress to and you repent to them. You get all the affairs of your life right. And if you do it right, you start that new beginning with blessings. If you don't, you start the next year cursed. Amen. 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 America has lived that out and cannot see it. Now, at the same time, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is happening in the same month, in the same week. And yet nobody can see God's trying to tell us something. You better come back to his presence. You better spend time with him. You better repent. You better turn away from the godless ways, church. And get yourself cleaned up because God's at the door. Jesus is coming soon. And you better get right when he's coming. I'm saved by grace. You just hang on to that. You're saved by grace, but do not use the grace of God as an occasion to sin. Yes, yes, God. Why do you think he says pray and make sure you're worthy to escape the things coming upon the earth? Why do you think he tells us about the ten virgins? Wake up, fill up your laps, get through, get ready. Get the, 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 the bridegroom's at the door. Didn't say anything about just lay around and say, thank God I'm engaged. I'm telling you, as a man of God, it's time for the church to stop playing with the world, come out of the world, repent of loving, depending, and fellowship with the world, and an ungodly covenant with the world, and a compromise of commerce with the world, and doing things in the church the worldly way, the Babylonian way, and making profit from it, and repent, and come back to God now in the times of all. Evaluate yourself, and repent, church, repent, America, come back. It's been present in the face of your almighty God.
Ten minutes, I'm going to have to read fast. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 8. This is a word the Lord gave me. He started walking me through scripture. I was completely unprepared for it and un did not plan for it. Wasn't sure if I was hearing God again because everything I say is always so negative and rejected by so many. And then this woman of God got up and talked to this congregation almost word for word when I was preaching out of a couple of different references to say the exact same thing. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, that's your confirmation. Stop wavering and tell the people what I said. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 8, I'd like for you to look at verse 14. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, the prophet speaking to God's people, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not rise? Shall they turn away and not return? Or should they backslide and not repent and come back? Why then is this people, Jerusalem slash America, slidden back by perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to their deceit. They, they won't recognize it or repent from it. They refuse to return. It means repent and come back to God. Folks, I'm telling you, we're at a place now where the vast majority of America refuses to repent and listen to God. They don't want to hear it. You're obsolete. That's an old book. It doesn't mean anything. Get it out of the schools. Get it out of the government. Get it out of my life. They refuse to come back to God. Why then is this people, Jerusalem, America, slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to deceit. Boy, if you, you just watch the news and watch the government. Yeah. You're caught red-handed messing with the voting machines. Right. Oh, no, that's not what that means. Yeah. Caught red-handed with things on your computer where you're making deals with foreign governments. Oh, no, that's not why. They refuse to acknowledge and repent. Right. Jeremiah 8, 14, or 4. Jeremiah 8, 4. Huh. Verse 6. I hearkened and heard. But they spake not right. God's listening. God's eyes are watching. And they're not doing right. No man repenteth him of his wickedness. Saying what? They say, what have I done? Everyone turns to his own course. Or what he thinks is right. We all walk in our own reality. In our own truth. But to teaching and doctrine from hell. As a horse rushes into battle, yea, the stork in the heavens knows her appointed times. And the turtle and the crane, the swallow, observe the times of their coming. In other words, natural animals know when it's time to migrate, when it's time to come back, and where to roost and where to build. And we don't know when to come back to God. And we can't figure out how to get back to God. And we don't know the right way to walk. And we refuse to find the right way to walk. Animals behave more in knowledge of the ways of God than we are in this generation. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. And that applies to the church. There's people right now just binding the devil for Katrina. Binding the devil for Ida. Binding the devil for him. When Jesus said in the last days... The, the sea swelling. Natural disasters happening. His heart's failing him for what's coming on earth. But God couldn't be in it, even though God said it's coming. God couldn't make up these kind of numbers. God couldn't plan exactly day to day for disasters. I submit to you, it's exactly God. Why? God's lovingly trying to shake us before real destruction covers the whole nation. They know not the judgment of the Lord. We, we're so full of love now that we got Christian church. We got pets. We got so-called ministers that wouldn't say the word sin if their gun was held in their head. God forbid you drop your latte in your lap at church. 
They won't say a single word about perverted lifestyles. Because after all, God's love, brother. We just got to preach love to them. You don't know. You have no idea the abominable, unbalanced your doctrine has become. You say to the righteous, it will be well with you. You say to the wicked, it's not going to be well with you. And judgment's waiting at your door. You don't preach this same message to the guy who says, don't you dare tell me the right things. How do they say, we are wise, and the law of God is with us. Lo, certainly in vain may, they, may he it. In other words, this, this Bible is a good book, but you don't really live your life by it. This Bible is one of the ways, but it's not the only way. Certainly in vain may he it. The pen of the scribe is in vain. Have you ever heard this? The church is irrelevant. We need to be relevant to our generation. That's vain wisdom, folks. Amen. If I'm relevant to them, there's no reason for them to repent. Come to me. Amen. The wise men, the wise men are ashamed. They're dismayed. And they're taken captive. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. That's why it's coming on them. Has America rejected the word of the Lord? Amen. Come on, talk to me. Has America, for the most part, as a nation, rejected the word of the Lord? Amen. If you can't shout yes from the rooftops, you, you haven't got a heart to hear the truth. Mm. And if somebody over there, well, in my town, we're having revival. Just shut your latte-sucking nonsense up. If you can't look at this nation and say America as a corporate people has thumbed their nose at God and don't want to hear what God has to say about it, you are willfully blind. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's right. The wise men are ashamed, they are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word. Why are they put to shame? Why are they dismayed? Why are they brought into captivity? Because they rejected them. Thus saith the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? Can you say this? None. None. If this is not your wisdom, there's no wisdom in you. Amen. It's all false lies and false knowledge. Yes. And it's all foolishness in the face of God. Yes. Whose eyes of the Spirit are looking all over America, judging her right now. Mm -hmm. And weighing her in balance. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I will give their wives to others. Huh. Your, your, your mom is going to be sleeping with somebody else. Pastor, that's excessive. Oh, really? Do you understand that the divorce rate in church now exceeds the divorce rate in the world? Naturally, part of that's because they just never managed to get married. They're just laying up with each other, calling it, you know, well, that's my baby's mama. And that's my baby's daddy. And they never never plan on getting married. So they're not even in the statistics. But to the ones that acknowledge marriage and actually get married, there's more divorces in church than the heathens. God's given your wives over to other people because you don't serve God. You just run around acting like telling people I'm saved by grace. Therefore will I give their wives to others and their field to them that shall inherit them. Well, what's that mean? Do you understand that almost 40% of the United States is owned by foreign countries? That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. It's growing every day. Yeah. And nobody can see it right in front of your eyes. China owns most of L.A. Right. Korea owns yeah. all. Russia owns farmland all over America. Over 40% of the United States, is, their deeds are held in foreign godless grips. He's given your land over to other people to inherit it. And you still can't say, well, maybe something's wrong with this nation, and maybe we need to spend time in God with fearful repentance and evaluation.
these lightning strikes, these hurricanes, all seven days, seven days, seven, all during Yom, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the days of all self-evaluation and repentance at, at the beginning of the year. This is the beginning of the Hebrew year. Listen, folks, if that's not divine timing, divine order, and divine interruption into the sin and affairs of our lives, you are blind. Amen. Now he's spelling it out right here. Why? Saudi Arabia owns mass amounts of America's problem. Yeah. Right here. Therefore I'll give their wives and others and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For everyone from the least even to the greatest is given over to covetousness. From the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. For they have healed the hurt of my daughter, of my people, slightly. Who's got that new Kenneth Copeland reference Bible? Or you got it? Open up to that. It says it beautifully right there. I want, I want you to hear it out of that translation. Why aren't you using that Bible, girl? You should be marking it all up and posting notes all over it and making it your best. Where's yours? <laughs> Listen to verse 11. Superficial. Superficial Christianity. Superficial ministry. Superficial. Oh, God loves you. Just, just, you're delivered. Don't worry about it. How about you need to repent and come out of adultery? Yes. How about you need to repent and come out of superficial yes. lifestyle with God? You're healing their wounds superficially. You can pat them on the back and say God still loves you, but until you tell them you need to repent so that you don't bring the curse on yourself is a bunch of superficial nonsense. Jesus even said, go and sin no more. Yes. 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 Oh no, we're smarter than the Lord Jesus Christ. We're more compassionate and loving than Jesus. Now listen to this next part. They've healed them superficially saying, peace, peace. All these prophets that say, oh man, prosperity, this is your time of, of divine flow of prosperity. Folks, we're just going to build houses and stuff clear up until the rapture. Indifferent to an entire generation dying and going to hell. I am word of faith. I am prosperity. And for you that want to play games with me, I'll never repent of that. I'm still a prosperous man, but I'm committed, sold out, sanctified, dedicated to a lifestyle before God to save the lost, preach the gospel, and pay any cost that it takes. And God blesses me, prospers me abundantly, and I am glad. But I don't change stuff. Now, I'm not looking to buy the biggest house five minutes before the rapture. Discern the size of the times. This is not a time to build mansions, to build kingdoms. It's a time to pull the net, preach the gospel, cast out devils, raise the dead, and get the harvest of God in.
The good news is greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. You'll walk through it. You'll overcome it. But if you're thinking it's your best life now, you're nuts. It's not even about you. It's about the harvest. Verse 12, were they ashamed? That's an obvious question with God. How come this doesn't bother them? There's churches with homosexuals dancing, prancing, and playing instruments on the platform, and they're not the least bit ashamed of it. They're not at all ashamed. Were they ashamed when they committed abominations? Folks, do you realize that right now sitting in churches there are Christians that voted for abortion? That's right. That's exactly right. Not the least bit ashamed of them supporting abominations and murder. They cannot even repent. They're so screwed up in their doctrines. Were they ashamed when they committed abominations? No. They were not at all ashamed, not in the least. You realize how in general society you cannot get the average person to blush anymore. Perversion and sin is so rampant, nothing shames them. Come on. You can't judge me. That's all you get out of them. They're, they're beyond shame. Try getting the average 16-year-old girl to blush about anything. They've done it eight times already. They're so corrupted and perverted, you can't even embarrass them. <clears throat> they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. You couldn't embarrass them. We're living that right now. They still can't recognize that all this was the plan, warning, love, outreach, judgments of God to try to shake us back to Him. Well, it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. Sometimes. Sometimes it's the goodness of God through prophets that say you need to repent. If you think for a minute a, a prophet or a preacher that tells you the truth isn't the goodness of God, you're already warping your theology. Was John the Baptist the goodness of God? Say, repent! For the kingdom of God is at hand. Was that the goodness of God? Yes. Come on. Now listen to this. They could not blush. Therefore shall they fall. Among them that fall. Listen. You just missed a vital verse right there. Therefore they will fall. Listen. Among them that fall. What's he saying? My chosen people will fall with my unchosen people. Well, I'm righteous. Yeah, but you want to live with them? You want to hug with them? You want to buddy up with them? You want to covenant with them? You'll fall with them. Therefore, they will fall with them that fall. You better come out from among them. Be separate. Spend time with God and repent. Folks, this just jumps off the page and slaps me around like a like a punching bag. This should be waking everybody up. You should, my God, thank you for opening my eyes. <laughs> Did the word say through the prophetic utterance going into 2021 that if if you're serving God, you're going to be all right. You'll make it through this. You'll be victorious. If you're not, you're going to shake with those that shake. You're going to, you're, you're, going to, you're, just, you're messed up. You'll fall with them that fall. You shouldn't fall, but you will. You shouldn't fall, child of God, but you will. If you don't repent and make God your source and stop leaning on the commerce, compromise, and strength of the arm of the flesh. Amen. 
will fall among those that fall. In the time of their visitation, they will be cast down, saith the Lord. Now I want to just put that into a quick perspective real quick. God's visitations can be a blessing or they can be a curse, all depending on your heart attitude. Even now, under grace. Ananias and Sapphira. The sorcerer that tried to get between Paul and the governor. That tried to keep Paul from preaching to the governor. Paul turned around and said, you'll be blind from this day forward. Bam! Instant blindness. They had to lead him off. In the presence of grace, he was blinded. Where do we get this weirdness that we're in grace so nothing bad ever happens from God? Where did you get that? A warped doctrine. I'm not going to come on the righteous, but if the righteous wants to side with the world, they'll fall with the world. You better watch your friends and you better choose your affections. And you better do it at the beginning right now. Discern the signs of the times. Take advantage of the timing of God. This is a time to repent. Spend time in His presence. And really evaluate your life. Because if you're just playing, it says the curse will still come on you. But if you really mean it out of a heartfelt repentance before God, realizing Jesus is at the door. And I've had to repent a hundred times last week. I don't think there's a day goes by I don't repent numerous times. Why? Because I, I don't think, well, man, it's all grace. No, he said, how about let's clean this nest? nasty stuff up. Stop playing games and get serious with the Holy God. Because if nothing else, he's worthy. These are supernatural events happening in front of us. And most of the church has got eyes to see or ears to hear. And he gave me a word right straight for this generation, for this very week. Abnormally supernatural inaccuracy. Divinely timed for our restoration, healing, and protection if we have ears to hear. We go, oh, nice message, put it on the shelf, don't do anything that God's trying to get America to do. It's not going to be any better for you. Am I supposed to fall? No. But I will if I don't. If you're serving God, it's going to be good for you. If you have a heart of constant repentance and self evaluation well, then you become self-centered and all your sins are magnified and you get into... I don't want to hear it. I don't even want to hear it. I never quit smoking until I said, God, this is a... Is a this is not a good witness, and you deserve better. When I look to him and say, you're, wor you're worthy of more than this, what I'm doing, nothing changed in my life. Great. I, I, don't tell me, well, you know, you look at that, it just grows. Now, when I looked to him and acknowledged it, then it disappeared. As long as I said, well, thank God I'm saved by grace, I kept smoking. Are you listening? Grace or not, he's worthy of more. That's right. Yeah. God's trying to get our attention. America, God's trying to get your attention. Listen to the word of God and repent. Because a shaking that you will never recover from is at the door. And in Jesus.